So good. Have Game Freak and the Pokemon Company really been biased in their representation of Gen 1? Let's take a look at some stats I dug up as I ask myself that very same question and see just how much Gen 1 has truly hogged the spotlight. Keep in mind, this video was recorded before Sword and Shield were released, so I'll use all the information that's available today to make this as accurate as possible. Consider this. Kanto as a region entirely has been made and remade seven times since its first inception in 1996, and these seven examples have been spread out over the course of 13 main series games, meaning that 13 out of 31, or 42% of all Pokemon games, have featured the entirety of the Kanto region. Yeah, that's kind of crazy when it gets put into perspective like that. And look, some of these examples are games like Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which are my favorite entrances into the franchise entirely. Keep in mind, my objective here isn't to get you to think that Kanto and Generation 1 are bad, merely that they've been prioritized over all other generations of Pokémon. The actual Pokémon of the Kanto region are also very heavily favored by Game Freak. Of the 53 Pokémon that have received pre-evolutions or post-evolutions in games they didn't first appear in, only 19 aren't from Gen 1, which means that this time, Generation 1 covers 65% of all Pokémon that fit into this category. Just remember, Pokémon Sword and Shield have not come out yet, which means we'll probably see this number go up in a few months. Keep in mind, my objective isn't to say that these Pokémon are bad. In fact, some of these Mons are the best designed and statted out Pokémon in all of the games. But again, the bias is pretty evident. Now let's talk about a very fan-beloved feature. Of the 48 Mega Evolutions available, or I guess I should say that used to be available, 15 are based on Generation 1 Pokémon. That's over 31% of all Mega Pokémon. And I know when compared to the other two stats I mentioned before, that might not sound like such a bad thing. But remember, this is split between 7 other generations. To put that into scale for you, let's take a look at the other regions. Generations 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 all combine for just 7 Mega Evolutions, coming in at just under 15% of the Mega representation. As far as Megas are concerned, the only generation that has more representation than Gen 1 is Generation 3, However, remember that the Hoenn remakes were the latest and last games in the series to receive new Mega Evolutions. If Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire featured more Generation 1 Megas than Gen 3, well, that... Honestly, I'm surprised that actually didn't happen. Good for you, Game Freak. For once, Generation 1 doesn't top the chart at something. I'm actually very impressed. Next, let's talk about a newer and very awesome feature, Regional Variants. These Pokémon are regional spin-offs of classic Pokémon from other generations, and thankfully, at least this feature didn't have to be axed for a Curry minigame. Of the 24 Regional Variant Pokémon, Rapidash included, only 3 are not based on Kanto Pokémon. And while Sword and Shield may very well have more Galarian forms that aren't Gen 1 Pokémon, it very well might at the same time not. And this last stat might just prove that a little bit more. Lastly, let's finish up with the bastard of a feature that is Gigamaxing. Of the 8 Gigamax forms that have been revealed already, 5 of them are based around Gen 1. And the famous Affleck leak tells us that we're getting more than just these five, but I won't count them because technically they haven't been confirmed yet. Game Freak literally did the exact opposite of what I just finished commending them for, Bruh. adding more Gigamaxes for Generation 1 Pokémon than they have for any other gen, even the new one. 
frankly, this Gen 1-er pandering is shameless at this point. I mean, I don't doubt that we're gonna get Gigamax forms for other Pokemon not in Generation 1, but I'd be willing to bet the splash that is my bank account on the guess that Generation 1 will comprise of most of the Gigamax capable Pokemon. And this would be okay if there was a reason for it. I mean, I get it, they're really trying to run with a Godzilla theme for this generation. And yeah, to be fair, they could pull it off, but why are they using Butterfree, a butterfly Pokemon, to represent Mothra? Hey, you know what, to be fair, they could have Volcarona or Mothim featured with Gigantamax forms as well, but I just can't shake the feeling that they gave this role to Butterfree because of the old Gen 1 nostalgia bias, and the numbers would seem to agree. Oh yeah, and Charizard now has more forms than all of these Pokemon, whose main gimmicks are the fact that they can change forms. I can't fully fault Game Freak and the Pokemon Company for leaning on Gen 1 so much. I mean, it does tend to move units, and any marketer worth their salt will tell you that nostalgia is arguably the best form of marketing available. However, this is a double-edged sword because it tends to leave fans of other generations feeling neglected. And sooner or later, fans are gonna get sick of Gen 1 hogging the spotlight. I have to admit, it's a little painful to see even more Gen 1 Pokemon get the spotlight when there's a huge cast of awesome Pokemon who would shine if given the chance. Anyways, whether you're a fan who's hyped for the new games or one who's maybe feeling a bit disappointed like me, I think we can all agree that it would be cool to let other generations share the spotlight. With this, I will leave you with a question. What generation would you love to see get a Galarian or regional form spotlight? For me, that's Gen 5 easy. Pokemon like Ferrothorn, Bisharp, Haxorus, Zebstrika, and Chandelurn would be perfect in my eyes for regional shifts. Leave your answers in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. This has been so good, and I am reminding you once again to go out there and keep on loving good stuff.